Hey everybody, welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna look at a viewer question on our most recent video about auto routing. Jeffrey Boy writes, forget auto routing, I'd like to see All Team implement an auto tuner. That will save time. Well, it's your lucky day, Jeffrey, because there is a feature like that inside of All Team Designer. Now, like many automation tools, the results that you get depend on how you use it. It is not just a point and click thing and it automatically solves all your problems. You do need to do a little bit of planning ahead of time if you want to use it properly. Also, you need to select specific nets that are gonna be proper candidates for AutoTune. Now, with that being said, let's jump into Altium Designer, take a look at this feature, and we'll see if it works in your workflow. Let's get started. So to get started, I've pulled up the same board that we were looking at in the auto routing. Now in this particular board, we've got several differential pairs. We can see that we already have the length matching applied across these different buses. And then we have a lot of other signals that don't necessarily require length tuning or length matching. So length tuning would need to be applied, of course, when you need to ensure that two signals are going to arrive at the same place within some specific time window. Now to define that time window, you need to define a matched length rule in the PCB design rules and constraints editor. So you can find that here if you just go into design, rules, and then of course down here under high speed, you see there's an option for matched lengths. So we've already got several rules applied in here. Now, whenever you use the equalize net length tool, what it's going to do is it's going to apply that to whatever nets already have a matched lengths rule in that editor. Now, if we go back into this dialog and we look at this matched length option, we can see that these are all enabled. So these need to be enabled in order for the equalize net length tool to be able to apply length matching sections automatically to these different nets. Now, let's just suppose I leave everything enabled for a moment and I go up here to tools and I do equalize net lengths and I just hit okay. You're gonna see that it immediately applies a whole bunch of length tuning sections in that 45 degree pattern to all of these differential pairs because remember, we had already applied some match length rules and those were particularly applied to all of these differential pairs within some tolerance. And so you can see it adds them in already. So it looks really awkward because to be honest, these had already been all length matched and we didn't really need to apply the equalized le net length tool anyways to this set of nets. Now let's just suppose that we wanna take a couple of particular nets and then we want to apply length tuning to them so that we can equalize their lengths. Let's pick these two UARTs. Here we've got a UART TX and then UART RX. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the tool to apply equal length tuning to just those nets. So the first thing we have to do is go up here and then we have to create a class. So we're gonna create a new class. I'm just gonna go to the classes dialog. I'm gonna right click, add class. I'm gonna name this UART-match. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through here and I'm going to find AWR1 UART and then I'm gonna add those into this class. So I just select them, click the right button, hit okay, and that is my new class. So using that class, I can apply a match length rule just to that particular class of nets. So to do that, I go up here to design and rules, and then I'm going to create a new rule, and we're just gonna call this match lengths dash test. So that's my new rule. So now I need to apply some length tuning tolerance. And we've had other videos where we've discussed what the length tuning tolerance should be. And we've actually looked at some examples from data sheets that show how to determine a length tuning tolerance for high speed buses or for buses running in parallel. In this case, we have two nets running in parallel. They're both single ended and they may need to line up within some time window. Now, just to be clear, this isn't a strict requirement for UART specifically, but it could be a requirement for other signals just make sure you understand your specific signaling standard before you start applying length tuning where it might not be needed. So here in this tolerance value, just for our sake of our example, I'm gonna set this to 10 mil. And we're gonna then hit okay. We're just gonna ignore this error here for the moment. And then once the DRC finishes, we can then apply the tool. Now you'll remember here, if I go back into the rules, you'll see that we left everything enabled. So when I then go to tools, equalize net lengths, 
and then I select my length tuning style and apply this, you'll see that it actually does apply this to everything that we wanted. So it applies it here to this UART net, and you can see that length matching section right here. But it also applied it to all of this other stuff where we didn't want it. So in order to control where this tool applies to different nets, what you have to do is go into the design rules and disable certain rules under the match length option. So here, if I just disable these other four options and then hit OK and then hit No, then you're gonna see here once the DRC finishes that I can then go up here, access the equalize net lengths tool. I'll hit OK. Again, I'm just gonna ignore this error for the moment. And then you'll see it adds in these sections right here. So that's exactly what we wanted was just to apply to this specific net. And so that shows how to configure and then control where this tool applies. So far, we just applied this to two nets and we can see those two nets right here. This is UART RX and UART TX on interface number one. So if I undo that, we'll just take those off for the moment. We don't have to do this by interface. When I defined the net class, I only applied it to these two UARTs. But if I wanted to, I could apply that same rule and that same technique to multiple UARTs. So you can see here that we have a second interface. I can select those UARTs, add them into this class, hit OK. Because I already have the design rule set up, I can just immediately run the tool again. And it's gonna apply that same net length equalization across all of the nets in that class. So if I just hit OK, you can see here it reapplies these. And then you can see here it also applied them to a couple other nets. So we have one right here. We have the other UARTs over here on this part of the connector. So you can see they're right here. And then if I just scroll over here, you can see a couple of spots where it added those little juts and then equalize the net lengths within that tolerance. Essentially what it's doing here is it's just adding them in where it has space. And I don't know the exact algorithm for choosing where these particular sections get applied, but it's essentially just applying them based on the design rules and you don't necessarily have exact control of where it puts them. So be mindful of that because this isn't going to be one of those things that solves all of your timing problems when you also have to worry about mode conversion in a differential pair. So with differential pairs, I wouldn't actually use this tool because you need to worry about mode conversion and you need to be careful where you apply those length tuning sections. Now, as you can see here, I've applied them very close to where we're coming off of these connectors for these four differential pairs. And the reason for that is because we have a little jut right here. And as I've said before in a couple other videos, I generally try to place the discontinuity close to the connector because if I'm routing out of a connector, I try to make the turn quickly so that we can get over to the other connector or to a destination without having to make too many turns and without having to do too much compensation elsewhere on the net. So you can see that little compensation is applied right here and it's done manually. You can also see here that if I just select this, this is just applied as a regular trace. So I can of course select this, I can drag it around, I can undo it if I want to, whatever I need to do. So you have the freedom to go back and clean this up manually if you want to, or you can just hit Control Z and undo it and it'll go back to the way it previously was in your PCB layout. So far in this video and in the auto routing video, we looked at a couple of the interesting automation tools that exist inside of Altium Designer. So what I wanna know is, what are your favorite automation tools inside Altium Designer? Let us know in the comments, and of course, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.